Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we have a little bit of a different video, which is gonna be me taking you through my makeup, hair, skincare, general beauty routine. Since I have been doing videos here on YouTube for quite a few years, comments and questions have come up from time to time around different products that I use and I've also spent a lot of my time researching trying to get to the bottom of what actually works what's worth spending money on etc etc um so I guess I wanted to share what I've learned with you and let you know how I do this <laughs> every day so we're not talking about perfumes in this one for a change, a rare change. So I think I am gonna start with my makeup. Um, I filmed me doing my makeup today so I can insert some pictures of that. So my skin is oily skin, especially the T-zone. I had really bad acne as a teenager. I still get spots like every month. Um, I think it's hormonal. My skin gets very shiny very quickly. I always carry powder with me. I'm constantly having to like repowder during the day. So I have tried so many foundations over the years to find something that doesn't go slidey on oily skin or that isn't too matte and cakey. And I've tried like pretty much all the different expensive ones and stuff but I've always ended up going back to my favorite which is from Dior and it's their Dior Forever foundation I think there are other ones they've brought out which are for more like luminous coverage but this is just original forever and I wear shade 2n and this is is literally the best foundation I've ever worn. For whatever reason, it just works with my skin. It doesn't clumpy, it just fits in as if it's a moisturizer and it provides like a really good coverage and but it doesn't look foundation-y. So it's just perfect for me, it doesn't slide. Yeah, I, I swear by this now. It's, it's kind of expensive, you know, being Dior, but it's definitely my like, go to hero products, whatever, desert island products, definitely, the, I totally rely on it. So for a powder to set the makeup, I use Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. Um, this is just their loose setting powder. I find that this is like so, so fine. Um, it just sort of disappears into the skin. Um, it's really good. It doesn't look like you've put a load of chalk on your face, you know, it just disappears in and helps set it. And then another thing I have, which is really annoying, is I have really dark under eye bags. Um, it seems to be a genetic thing. A lot of my relatives have it as well. When I'm not wearing foundation concealer under my eyes and people see me, they often will say like, oh my God, are you okay? You look really tired. You know, are you ill? And it's like, no, that's just my face. Um, it's not like a sleep thing. It's just, I guess the skin's really thin there. Or I don't know, anyway. I don't look well so I always have to wear under eye concealer and again that's been a challenge for me because so many concealers bunch up and go into the lines under the eye um, and look awful but I finally found one the other year which is the Tarte Shape Tape. Um, I did lots of research and everyone was talking about this. It's not widely available here in the UK but I did find a website, I think it was QVC that sold it. I'll leave all these products linked, by the way, down below in the description for the USA, UK, Europe. And this one is definitely the best I've had in terms of not going weird and clumpy in the lines under the eyes. And I use this in a lighter, I wear Fair Neutral. So I'll use this and it's very light and then I'll put my foundation over it which blends in with the rest of the face. This one has been the best I've found so far. Then for my eyeshadow, I really like a um, pinky type ready co color eyeshadow. Um, at the moment, I'm loving this Lancome palette, which is called Hypnose Palette Rose Fusion. And so I will just use the and pinky color in the middle and then over the top of it, um, use some of the brown as well in the crease. And then over the top of it, I'll put this shiny, um, sparkly pink color 
or there's a gold sparkly one to put on top of it as well, which just looks nice. I, I really love the Urban Decay Cherry Palette as well. It's similar colors, but because this is like smaller, it's a little bit more convenient. But I do use the Cherry Palette from Urban Decay a lot as well. And then for my eyeliner, I use this Lancome Art Liner, which is like a felt tip. I have tried all different types of liners and I've found that the felt tip type ones are the best for me. I don't think I have a very good steady hand. I don't have good attention to detail. So these ones work best for me being um, not very good at eyeliner. And it's really thick, it's really black, it really stays and you can use it just to do the flick at the end. So that's the best one I've come across in all my research. I'm also using the Lancome Hypnose Mascara, um, and I'll just blink my eyes, you know, just see really get it in there. And then I also use the Lancome Sourcils Styler, it's called, um, on my eyebrows. So I have very, very fair eyebrows and eyelashes, very, very blonde. So every week I dye them black. I use a black tint, which I just order off Amazon. I'll leave the link below. You mix it with an activator, again off Amazon, and I just leave it on my eyebrows for a minute, um, on my eyelashes for longer, and it dyes them obviously darker. And without that, my eyebrows are literally like transparent, and I really like eyebrows, like having them shape your face, I think they're really important. So that's like a really inoffensive way of me getting this definition. And then I'll just use this to like touch them up because they have some patches in them so this will fill in the gaps and sort of train them in the right way. And I do use sometimes a cheap white eyeliner. This is something I discovered. If you use white eyeliner under the eyes, it makes your eyes look bigger. So if you want that bigger eye look, that sort of anime look, then white under the eyes really helps. I just get this off Amazon, like a few pounds, soft coal, it's a Rimmel London one. For um, covering up any spots or blemishes, I use the matching Dior Concealer Forever Skin Corrector uh, in one end. I got the two in one, it was too dark, which is weird. And um, so I use one end and then for my blusher, I use Laura Mercier. Um, I think this really nice kind of peachy pink works well with my skin tone. And I recently learned actually from Laura Mercier um, event that I went to that it looks kind of better putting the blusher higher up the face, kind of on the cheekbone. I always used to put it here in the apple of the cheek, like I'd smile, just put it there. But actually going up, I think it does actually look better. I have no idea why, um, but it does look better. So I definitely would recommend, pass that tip on. Um, this Laura Mercier well, blush is called Watermelon, which is a cool name. And then for bronzer, I use this Bobbi Brown one called Bobbi Brown Bronzing Powder um, in number one, Golden Light. And then I do the Kim Kardashian trick of writing the number three. So I'll just go like that, like a number three to get the top here, obviously the, the crease in the cheek to make the cheekbone stand out more and then the chin line to make your, you know, to snap your face in. So it's like creating that fake shadow. Um, I like this Bobbi Brown bronzer because it's not orange. Like I don't use bronzer to make myself look more tanned. I use it as this shadow. So I found that this one gives that best effect. And then I'm obsessed with this highlighter from Laura Mercier. It's called Indiscretion Face Illuminator. And I just think it is the most beautiful thing. Um, and then I just use my finger, you know, um, and it just creates this golden sheen, just highlighting my cheekbones. And then I, for lips, I love the Pillow Talk range from Charlotte Tilbury. The, they have a number of different Pillow Talks now. There's obviously the original color, which is like worldwide bestseller, but then I have this darker one as well. There's loads of them. Um, they're all just like perfect, natural, add that color, but don't look too like fake. Really recommend them. And then I'll set the look with the Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. Definitely the best setting spray out there. 
So I think that's it in terms of makeup. What I use on my lips before I do the lip, um, sort of at the beginning of the day, before I go to bed and top up, is the Elizabeth Arden 8 Hour Cream. I am obsessed with this. I am one of those people that cannot cope with having dry lips. I always carry lip balm. If I leave the house without it, I'll literally go back and get it. If I have dry lips, it, I can't think or do anything else. It stresses me out. So I'm always applying lip balm. And um, obviously I've tried many over the years. And the eight hour cream I think is insanely clever from Elizabeth Arden. I know it's really famous. They do do little lip balm versions of this, but this is just the original normal one. It's not especially for lips, but I find I put this on and it's just, they immediately just feel super moisturized. It's not sticky or tacky. It's just, amazing i put this on every night and you know it, it's in the morning they're still really like moisturized and it's just perfect amazing and you can use this on anything right like any dry patches use it on your cuticles like people use it on a million different things it is very clever i really do think it is worth the hype that is around eight hour cream so in terms of my skincare before I do my makeup and taking it off, so like I said, I have really oily skin. So what I have found from my research is that salicylic acid is really helpful for reducing the amount of um, sebum, it's called, which is the oil that gives you spots and makes your skin oily. So I like this range from La Roche-Posay. I use this um, lotion, it's like a toner, but it has that salicylic acid in. So I use that and there's a face wash as well, which goes with it and it has a really fresh feeling to it. I think that does help keep the oil under control. So this one I recommend. And what I discovered is that, and I only discovered this like, you know, my late twenties is that there's a difference between hydrated, dehydrated and being oily in your skin. I always thought if it's oily, obviously I don't have dry skin because it's covered in oil, but actually you can have oily skin, but it still be dehydrated because dehydration is lack of water, not lack of oil, which is totally different. So for my moisturizer, I always try and get a hydrating one, but not something that's heavy or creamy with shea butter in, nothing like that because that's gonna clog up the oily side. I just want something that's gonna add water. So I mentioned it in a recent video, the Tasmanian Spring Water Hydration Boost Cream. I'm loving it at the moment because it's like this, this disappearing gel. This, it has this like jelly texture that wobbles um, and it just disappears immediately on the skin and gives it like water, but it doesn't give it anything else. Um, so I found that's worked really well. And then every day without fail, even if I'm not going outside, I will wear SPF. Um, obviously the sun um, is the number one cause of aging and wrinkles. So I wanna get on top of that um, as early as I can and stop that from aging me. So I've tried lots of different SPFs and with my oily skin, sometimes like adding an SPF sunscreen on top is just gonna stop my makeup from sticking well, it's gonna make it like oilier quicker. So what I've found is that this La Roche-Posay spray, this is an SPF 50, which is what I want, spray, and it protects against UVA and UVB, which is what you want. Some of them only do like one of them. And this is a special anti-shine one. So basically I just spray this all around after I've moisturized, and this, it just doesn't add another layer it's so fine it doesn't feel like i've put on another cream so this i definitely has been the best for me so i just buy this when it's on offer i'll just buy loads of it and um and use it up and um, it's really really good find i did want to mention i know it's a bit lame i do use crest whitening <laughs> sorry it's nearly run out on my teeth um crest is a US brand which isn't available here in the UK. I think whatever they put in Crest isn't legal here in the UK or something. So you can't buy this in the drugstore. So I either get people who've been to going to America to go and buy me a load of them 
or you can order it off Amazon here in the UK and it really, really does make your teeth whiter, much better than anything available over the counter in the UK. So I do swear by these Crest toothpaste and I use their whitening strips as well. Um, so one of the things for skincare that I've looked into around anti-aging um, is obviously you can go and have facials and stuff and spend so much money on stuff like that. And I've really tried to look into, you know, what's just a nice thing to have, like having someone massage your face and what's actually gonna help for real anti-aging and, you know, suppleness in the skin. And what I found is that micro-needling does help because you're basically making tiny little injuries to the skin which forces it to then renew and bring collagen back but to go and have microneedling is like 100 pounds or something at a salon but what i found is that you can actually just order off amazon a microneedling kit which is what i have here a roller and it has teeny tiny little spikes on it and so i try and use this when i remember um, on my face just massage and I also use it on my body where I have like little scars and things and it's just gonna promote the skin to refresh the trouble with using it at home is that I guess you can like cause infections and stuff if it's dirty so all I do is I just buy some alcohol um, you know cleaner off Amazon like that special alcohol and I just put this put it in a jar in a glass put this in you know to clean it and that kills bacteria and stuff I have quite a lot of acne scars on my chin from decades of, of spots you can't really see them but I can see them and um, so I'm using this to try and wear them down and get them to disappear um, so I think that's definitely saved me a lot of money and obviously I'm able to use it more than I would if I was going to a salon. I'll leave all these links down below guys. So moving on to my hair. So I am a natural blonde. However, my hair has very high like photosensitivity it's called. So if I go out in the sun, if I go on holiday, if I go skiing, it it lightens it quite a lot. But living here in London, and also being someone who's not a sun worshipper, my, my, son, my hair doesn't really see the sun. It gets, especially in winter, it, it can get like this mousy, dull color. So what I, dis but I don't want to go and have it dyed or highlighted because it's super expensive and I don't know, I just don't want to do it. But what I discovered is this John Frieda range, particularly, this spray called controlled lightning spray. So whenever I wash my hair, I will spray maybe two or three sprays of this onto the roots. And this does the lightning for me. It lightens, it just adds this blondness to it, which it wouldn't get without the sun. Um, I don't, I'm sure this probably wouldn't work if you have like brown hair, black hair, but if you have mousy blonde hair like me this is amazing I think it's like five pounds and obviously so much cheaper than going to their salon um so this has been a real find and there's there's shampoo and condition stuff that go with this but I just use the spray and then definitely my life-saving products definitely like one of the best products that's ch literally has changed a bit of my life is um, dry shampoo, particularly the Batiste range, are the best in my opinion. I, having greasy skin, also have really greasy hair. So I used to wash my hair every day and I'd have to style it every day, um, back when I was like a teenager. And then dry shampoo came out and changed my life because I literally, the second day, if I hadn't washed it, it would be grim, it would be greasy. Like I would hate going out with it, I can feel it. I'd try and like wash it a bit, like with some water and it was horrible. This allows me to go three days without washing my hair by using this on the second and third day. So that has saved me so much time over the years. Again, I just order these in bulk. They have all different nice smells as well. Um, but that has changed my life. So in terms of my hair, I'll put a little bit of oil in the end and that John Frieda spray when it's wet. And then what I discovered a couple of years ago, which is awesome, is these hair dryers that have the rotating brush. I use this Babyliss one. And this has been awesome because using a heavy hair dryer, 
and then try to like get your brush to make it smooth it's just such a mission and your arms hurt whereas with this I just turn it on you just press the button and it just winds up you hold it for a few seconds let it out and it's like smooth and like curls in a bit and it looks like it has that like salon blow dry effect and it's so quick um if I'm wanting to like spend time and you know want to spend a good sort of five five six seven minutes on my hair I'll do it in three sections and just do that and it looks totally smooth it's so good really recommend these and they're really inexpensive and then because I have quite thin fine hair I find that if I put a curl in it it helps it look a bit fuller and healthier now it the best my favorite hair is if I use like proper heated rollers but obviously that's not practical every day it takes forever and I tried lots of different curling tongs and irons and stuff and what I found is in my hair after like two three hours it fell out um, but I finally found one which is actually really cheap that's that does last so this is the curling wand I use by a brand called Yogi and I I use this and I literally just do, I'm, pu I'm putting in a video, just like two curls on each side. I think if you do lots of small pieces of hair, it looks kind of like ringletty. So I just want to add this wave to it. But I think this gets really, really hot. You have to be careful, like I have burnt myself on this a few times. I think that, but because it gets so hot, it stays so the next day the curl is still there it once it's in it's not coming out until you wash your hair and that's something that I want so I think these are about like 25 pounds or something but way better than really expensive ones I've seen so yeah this is my little secret weapon cool so if you're still here and still watching um, I hope you found that helpful interesting hope that answered some of your questions um, let me know if you have any other questions about my different routines in the comments I'll try and answer them but that's it guys so thanks so much for watching as always and I'll see you in the next video